Good morning. Welcome to Glenville Methodist Church. My name is David. I'm the pastor here. And let me say happy Easter to you. It is so good to see each and every one of you here today, um, especially on this sacred and holy day. I also want to welcome those of you who are watching online, couldn't be with us in person. Thank you for taking time to be with us on this Easter Sunday. We have a beautiful morning of worship planned, and I'm excited to get started with it in just a moment. But I do want to let you know some announcements. All of our normal activities are kind of taking a break this week. It is spring break for the um, public schools and for Pinewood, and so we will not have any of our Wednesday night activities. They will return um, though the following week, and then there is no youth tonight, so enjoy some time with your family, or if you're like me, we got a pickleball set for uh, Easter, so come join us out on the pickleball courts and see how bad and see me scream at my kids and get frustrated and then go cry in the corner. So um, um, if you want to come play pickleball with us. I think that's it. Announcement-wise, there are some things happening in the future, though, that are in the bulletin um, that you might want to take a look at, but that's where our announcements are. Those are the main announcements that I have. Do you have any other announcements that you want to lift up today? All right, well, um, I want to say thank you for being here for this special Sunday. It is a privilege to be able to lead worship at Glenville Methodist Church, and especially on these high and holy days, and so I'm honored to be here. Now, here's what I know. Um, Sometimes people come on the holidays for different things. It's a family tradition. Um, Somebody dragged you here, um, or you just like it coming. No matter who you are, here's what I guarantee today. If you lean in and you listen for God to speak to you, God will. Whether it's through the music, whether it's through the cantata, whether it's through the signs or symbols, um, this is a special moment when we set aside time to God to remember his life, death, and resurrection, God will speak to you. So I challenge you to listen. To give you a preview of what we'll be doing today, in just a moment we'll start out by singing some hymns and then we will have our Easter cantata where the choir will take over for a few moments and lead us in song and word and then I'll have a what I hope is a powerful Easter sermon and then at the conclusion of the service we will go outside and you're welcome to put flowers on the cross and everybody's welcome to take pictures in front of the cross too and so it's going to be a great morning. I'm going to ask Mr. Vic, our lay leader, to come and lead us in our opening prayer. Good morning, everyone. Just bow your heads and join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, on this blessed Sunday, we come before you with hearts full of gratitude and joy. We celebrate in the resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the promise of new life and the hope that Easter brings. As we celebrate together, may the message of Easter inspire us to have grace and compassion toward others. Lord, we lift our prayers for those who may be struggling or have difficulties in their lives. We ask that you comfort them with your presence and bring them healing and hope. We ask that you use us to spread your words so that we can make a difference in the lives of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we join without Christ- we join with all Christians who throughout time sing praises to God, especially on a day like today. Um, at the end of our service last week, we solemnly processed out our elements, and as we sing God's praises, we will bring back in our vestments that help us engage God with worship. Would you please stand as we sing up from the grave he arose? The words will be on the screen. Please stand.
It's important for us to remember who we are and whose we are. One of the ways the church has done this throughout time is through our creeds. Will you please join me as we recite the Apostles' Creed? The words will be on the screen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. While you are still standing, will you take a moment to greet those around you and the children may come forward for our children's time. All right, y'all look very handsome and very sharp today. Thank you so much for being here for our big Easter Sunday worship service. I want to share with you the story of a miracle that happened this past Wednesday when we were out on the playground. We had our Easter egg hunt. We had delicious hot dogs. We had beautiful weather. The rain held off, and it was awesome. And then I saw a miracle happen. McKenna came up to me and she told me about a lizard she had discovered and she was trying to get the lizard with a baseball bat at some point and then eventually she came up to me with the lizard she was being encouraged by the porter boys to throw it on the preacher throw it on the preacher I think yes okay so there was a, and people were chased around with this lizard now it appeared that the lizard was dead it was Della was afraid of the lizard too. Yes, y'all had a lot of fun harassing people with the lizard. Now, what was interesting is we thought the lizard was dead, right? He was playing dead. He, turns out he was playing dead because I saw him attached to McKenna's shirt holding on for your dear life at one point. Y'all know what today is? You were afraid it, you were afraid it was going to bite you? You looked like it was your best friend. You didn't look like you were scared at all. So... The lizard we thought was dead was simply playing dead. It was still alive. Now, today we celebrate Easter. Somebody was not playing dead. Jesus was really dead. He died on the cross. And as a matter of fact, to make sure that he was dead, they took a spear and poked him in the side and saw that he was really dead. It was not a trick it was not some way that he fooled everybody. He died on the cross for our sins. In the same way we got excited about the lizard still being alive, even more we get excited. Because it's not simply a story of survival. It is a story of God's love. God died on the cross in Jesus Christ for you, McKenna. For you, Porter boys, even though you chased the preacher around. Lamb, he died for you. He died for each one of you. And then he says, I am so much more powerful than death. And on Easter, where they had laid his body, the women went to the tomb and it was empty. Because our God is alive. That's why we celebrate. That's why we put flowers on the cross. Because we are excited. We are joyful that even death could not stop Jesus. Would you join me in saying our echo prayer this morning? Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for the miracle of Easter and your love for us. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. All right, if you are third grade and below, you can go to the back. I like those sunglasses. And third grade and above third grade, you're invited to stay in worship today. I have to be honest, I'm surprised McKenna didn't bring the lizard to church this morning, so I'm grateful for that. Well, as we prepare for our morning time of prayer, if you're watching online, make sure to say hello to those watching with you. If you have a prayer request, post it there in the chat, and when you go back and look at those, um, I want to ask you in just a second if you have any prayer requests, but I have a praise first. This past week, uh, my wife, Brandy, was named a Teacher of the Year, so... Um, we're very excited about that. So she'll be here during Sunday school at some point and we'll be at the next service. But if you see her, uh, make sure to tell her congratulations. My joke is when I move into a town, I'm always the Methodist preacher. But after a couple of years, I become Brandy's husband. And so history once again repeats itself. And um, it's a privilege to um, have her recognized. And so I'm very happy about that. But what's going on in our community that we need to be mindful of before we go to God in prayer? Yes. Okay. Miss Betsy Martin's son Timothy passed away, so we want to remember the family of Timothy Martin. Okay. Okay. Byron. Myron. Okay. Okay. Jalkowski. It's, it's Monty's, yeah, it's Monty's father-in-law. Okay, Monty's father-in-law. Okay, thank you. Uh, family of Dale Stanfield. Okay. I saw a hand back there. Yes. Okay, Carol Yon passed away. Of course, Mr. Bruce passed away a couple of years ago, too, and just a legendary family, very sweet Christian people from Statesboro. Okay, David Wright's going to have upcoming back surgery, okay? All right, anything else? All right, well, let's go to God in prayer. I ask God to forgive our sins, pray for our week ahead, reflect on uh, the meaning of Easter. And then at the conclusion of my prayer, I invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer out loud with me. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we come before you on this Easter Sunday, remembering that God is alive that Jesus is alive. God, as we gather on these high and holy days, we give you thanks for the themes that are before us, a loving God, a powerful God, a caring God. Lord, as we go to put flowers on the cross in just a moment, help us to remember that that first cross that Jesus died on was still soaked with his blood and the sacrifice that he made for us. <clears throat> Help us, God, to have a great Easter Sunday, to enjoy time with friends, to enjoy the beautiful signs, but help us to hear, to relive, and remember the message that is not just celebrated on Easter Sunday, but for Christians is the reason we are Christians. It's the reason every day that we get out of bed. It's the reason that we have purpose for our life. Because our God loves us. Our God died for us so that nothing can separate us from you. And that death, while it is still an enemy for us, it is a beaten enemy. 
that the resurrection that Jesus experienced, we all will experience on some level one day. When we put our faith and hope, when we trust in and totally adhere to you. God, on these high and holy and special days, we are gathered together. We see friends and faces we may not have seen in a while. And God, by your grace, may we do it again next year. But we know over these next months that there will be challenges in our lives, opportunities to shrink away from what you are calling us to, opportunities to look at our challenges and be afraid. God, help us to be people who walk a little closer with you. Help us to have a little more joy, even in the face of fear or challenges. God, we want to lift up our friends who are hurting and all the Christians around the world who suffer. But we also want to say a special prayer for the family of Timothy Martin, for Myron Jalkowski, for the family of Dale Stanfield, and the family of Carol Young. God, we want to ask you to be with David Wright in his upcoming procedure. God, we ask this, we pray for ourselves and we pray for our friends all in Jesus' name. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. This is day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now the Glenville Methodist Choir presents to you their Easter cantata.
risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Thanks be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for all he's done for us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Fear not, Christ is alive forevermore, and he has the keys of hell and of death. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? By his power God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Thanks be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Thanks be to God. We had a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ.
choir, excellent job. That was superb. Thank you for sharing that with us. Our choir is Mary Catherine Banks, Judy Blocker, Pete Blocker, Debbie Burkhalter, Judith Cabbage, uh, Richard Cabbage, uh, Quinn Flournoy, Vic Flournoy, Leon McElwain, Carol Strickland, and Norma Strickland. And then we are, of course, led by Mary Ann Cabbage. Let's give them one more round of applause. Did I leave anybody's names off? Well, thank you all so much for lifting our spirits with song. Would you pray with me? God, as we look at your word and remember what happened 2,000 years ago, let it not be a story. Let it be an event that speaks into our life, that energizes us each and every day to remember the miracle that happened on Easter. God, open our eyes to see what it is you want us to see this morning. God, we want to hear you speak into our individual lives. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, you can open them up to the Gospel of Matthew. We're going to look at the very last chapter. We've been working our way through the Gospel of Luke, but today we're taking a break to go and do a deep dive on that first Easter morning. It's Matthew 28, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 10. The words will be on the screen. Hear these words. After the Sabbath... At dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go and quickly tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women, they hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy. And they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Today, for the brief moment that we are gathered together, I want us to reflect on this Easter story. And particularly this phrase found in verse 8, where it says the women hurried away from the tomb. And Matthew tells us, afraid yet filled with joy. My argument today is this. Easter means joy even when we are afraid. Easter means joy even when we are afraid. Let's consider what that first Easter was. It was not like the lizard this past week that was playing dead. Jesus was really dead. We know, um, I didn't want to say this in front of the kids as graphically, but when the spear punctured Jesus' side, blood and water came out where so much fluid had filled up around his heart that water, the fluids, came out of him. The Romans were extremely talented at killing people in the most painful way possible. And one of the ways that they made sure that people were dead was the penalty for the soldier if they didn't kill somebody when they're supposed to was that they themselves would die. Jesus was really dead. And Jesus was really resurrected. 
A couple years ago during my Easter sermon, I shared this quote, and I always think of it around Easter time. It was from this man who was uh, working for President Nixon and was arrested, and he became a Christian while he was in jail. And he said this, I know the resurrection is a fact, and Watergate proved it to me. How? Because 12 men testified that they had seen Jesus raised from the dead, and then they proclaimed that truth for 40 years, never once denying it. Everyone was beaten, tortured, stoned, and put in prison. They would not have endured that if it weren't true. Watergate embroiled 12 of the most powerful men in the world, and they could not keep alive for three weeks. You're telling me 12 apostles could keep alive for 40 years? Absolutely impossible. Jesus was really dead and was truly resurrected. But what does that mean for us? How does this tie into Easter means joy even when we are afraid? You see, the women were filled with joy at this good news. My family, because I work on Sunday mornings on Easter, we celebrate Easter usually on Saturday. So the kids got to have their Easter egg hunt yesterday. We had family over. We cooked. We had a a big time. Um, For us, we celebrated Easter a day early. But we need to put our mind back into what that Saturday really was like. It was not fun. It was not a joyful time. It was scary. The people who were following Jesus had given up their lives, had given up their jobs to follow this man. Now, this might surprise you, but this actually happened a pretty good bit. Um, During this time, there would be several people who would claim to be the Messiah, and they would get some followers, and they would either be executed or fizzle out. And usually when those fake Messiahs got executed, all the people just would go back and try to get their jobs. And so on Holy Saturday, they're figuring out, what are we going to do? Was this a false Messiah? Did we somehow get it wrong? Did Jesus somehow get it wrong? But Easter confirmed Jesus got it right. There's a verse from Good Friday. I want to look back at Good Friday for just a second. It's Matthew 27, 51. You don't have to turn there. But it's talking about the moment when Jesus died. It said, at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two From top to bottom, the earth shook and the rocks split. Now, if we don't have um, first century Jewish ears, it might be like, okay, was it some type of special curtain? I remember one time I spilled some Kool-Aid on my mama's curtain and I got in big trouble. Was it something like that? No, the curtain that it is talking about was the most important curtain to ever exist. It was the curtain that separated God, a holy God, from his people because they were too unclean to get close. But when Jesus dies, the curtain is torn from the top to the bottom. There is nothing that separates God from his people now. At that moment, Jesus paid the price for us to have access to God. A God who loves us. And cares for us. Now, if you've grown up in the Western world, if you've grown up in church, you've heard this. This is not a new concept to you, but this was radical. I told y'all earlier in the year, we got a new video game system, and I know sometimes, you know, here he comes talking about video games again, but I promised my fifth grade. Uh, Bible study that meets on Thursday mornings that I would talk about Fortnite. Fortnite is this game where you have a battle royale where you versus 99 other players are trying to see who can last to the very end. And you jump in, they're all online, there's people all around the world you're playing and you're trying to battle to see who can be the last one standing. Now, I don't know a lot about the game and the themes, but every now and then they have a new theme for the game. And right now the theme is Greek gods. And so is what you do is you can go and find these Greek gods and you can steal their powers. You can get Zeus's lightning. Um, you can get the Greek god Hades. You can get a whip that he has. And I don't know how all these things exactly work in the game and Luke makes fun of me for not being very good at it. But it's this idea that these Greek gods, they're dangerous. You want to stay away from them, but maybe you can get close enough just to get something to help you through the day, but you better get away from them or they can harm you. 
This was actually the view of the first century Roman world. They believed in all these Greek gods and these gods did not love you. They did not care for you. You wanted to stay away from them. You might go give a little offering and go to the temple, but you got out of there. You were just using that God to get what you needed just to make it by. This is radical what happened in the first century. For people to hear that, no, there's not a God who hides away, but there's a God that came from heaven to earth. There's a God that knows every little thing you did. Even the things you don't want the people closest to you to know. And you know what that God does? God doesn't use Zeus's lightning on you. That God doesn't flinch to love you. Even in spite of all that you've done. That's why these women, that's why us, we can have joy even when we are afraid because God is with us. There's a writer, James Clear. I don't know if he's a a person of faith or not, but he writes these interesting newsletter articles and he's written a book called Atomic Habits and I kind of follow some of his stuff. And he said something in his email a couple weeks ago, and I was working on my sermon a couple weeks out, and pat myself on the back for that, but it's Easter, it's a big Sunday. And I said, man, I feel like God's telling me to put this in the sermon notes. And he was talking about how we all have problems in our life. And he said this, Some people get addicted to chain smoking their problems. They spend all day going from sorrow to sorrow. It doesn't have to be that way. You can live each day going from joy to joy. Like a sunflower that turns to face the sun as it moves across the sky. It's not about having a problem-free life, but about focusing on the light sunflowers still have shadows but they are always behind them you see the part of the christian life is that we can have joy but it doesn't mean everything is going to be easy there will be shadows but as we look to the sun the shadows stay behind us just a moment we'll sing a song and the choir sang part of it where we sing because he lives all fear is what gone and and i believe there are moments in our life where we can sing that with integrity and we are so excited god all fear is gone but i think that's probably a momentary thing for most of us because we'll face another fear And then we have to say, God, I'm going to turn back to the sun and look at you. I'm going to turn to your light that you sent into the world in Jesus and tell that fear to get behind me. The women were filled with joy, even though they didn't know what was going to happen next. Easter means joy even when we are afraid. Okay, well, that's a good thing to think of, preacher. But what does that mean for us? Well, there's a clear command given to the women by the angel and by Jesus. Jesus tells them, go tell my brothers. The angel tells them, go and tell them. You see, part of our Christian life is that we internalize it so much that we want to share it with other people that it overflows out of us, that we want to tell people, sometimes with the way we live our life, sometimes explicitly using words to go and tell them. As Brown Russell says, the gospel comes to us on the way to someone else. The good news that you hear today is for you and it is for everybody that you know. We tell that. But before we can go and tell it, we have to integrate it to our lives. We have to have that joy that is available to every one of us. So decision time. What do you want to do? 
You get to decide. Maybe it's the first time in your life you say, okay, I, I don't really understand that joy, but I, I want that joy. I want to know this God that says nothing can separate us from Him that tears the curtain. Or you can decide, I'd rather be somebody who chain smokes my problems. I like griping. It makes me think that it makes me feel better. You get to decide. And if you're a Christian each and every day, you get to decide. Am I going to follow God today or not? Am I going to see the world as God sees it or not? It's easy. We simply have to reach out and say, God, help me to follow you. It's easy to start, but you can only continue by God's grace. Choosing a God that does not flinch to love you. Glenville Methodist, this Easter, I want to tell you, Easter means joy, even when we are afraid. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we confess that sometimes we get too focused on our own problems. Or that we use you like the Romans used Greek gods. Help us to follow you. Help us to put our trust totally in you. And if you're here praying and you say for the first time, I want to make that commitment. Simply say, Lord, I need you. Forgive me of my sins. And be Lord of my life. God, help each of us to face the fears in this world with joy. A joy that surpasses understanding. A joy that comes from a God who created us and loves us. Help us to cling that because you live, our lives are worth living. In Jesus' holy and precious name we ask this. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Because He Lives. We're going to sing the first and the third verse. The words will be on the screen. Would you please stand?
Well, thank you so much for being with us in worship today. I hope you heard God speak to you in some way, whether through the music or the message. I hope you know how much God loves and cares for you. Would you receive this benediction? Heavenly Father, as we go from this place, may your grace go before us and your face shine upon us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen.